You're listening to Live Wild Radio, the part-time adventure podcast. Join us as we explore how outdoor adventures build mind, body, and spirit. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. This is episode something. I 21. 21? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and so Sarah Duma was one of our first guests on the show. Um, you know, we, we said, hey, we have a podcast. And quite honestly, if you're a creepy fuck out there <laughs> and you want to be- do your creepy fuck things, start a podcast. Because all you have to do to, to, to get people to like, you know, <laughs> conversation with you is say, hey, I have a podcast. And nobody says no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I also came for the dinner because yes. you guys cook excellent food, and there's beer. Oh and man, yeah. So, uh, Sarah, you've been all over the place. Was it January we had Sarah on? around that? Yeah, yeah. Like and episode s- two on, or three, or and on that episode we talked about um, North Korea. Yes, yeah. WTF, <laughs> which was amazing. <laughs> it was pretty cool. And then we talked about the Camino El Santiago. You know how you take your rest backpacking trips yep and um you did the pct before that and the at and so where have you been since we last spoke uh in january i spent a week in curacao in the southern caribbean and then in february i was in turkey and then at the end of february i went to israel did some hiking there and then the rest of the time i was on the continental divide trail in the united states it's, it's basically getting most people's lifetime of, of hiking trips. Yeah. And yeah, I got, and that's the spring in a sense because we're the part time adventure podcast and uh, you don't part time adventure. Uh, Not you, currently. Yeah. <laughs> it's much more full time adventure. You know, I, I'd say the two biggest really are since we last saw you are Israel and then the CDT. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So let's go to Israel. Mm-hmm. Um, because people who've, followed like through hiking or you know they're familiar with the track or uh the triple crown might be familiar with the continental divide trail and obviously we'll get to it but uh the idea of like through hiking across israel like where did that come from i had seen it on a list uh, i think national geographics like the best hikes in the world so I I saw that one and I'd never been to Israel and I thought what a be- what's the best way to experience a country walk across it slowly and that way I could do some sightseeing along the way and really get a feel for what um, the country stands for and what the people are like now. So take us through that. Like, does it go north to south? Because Israel's yeah. kind of like along the coast. So yeah, it goes um, north to south. Depending on time of year, you start in the south or you start in the north. Uh, the most difficult part is the desert section, and you can really only w- walk it in the cooler months. Like it would be impossible otherwise, because there are times when there's no shade. There's also uh, pretty much absolutely zero water sources along the way. So it's logistically difficult because you have Mm. to pay someone to hide water for you in the desert, bury it or cache it somewhere. And um, so you need to like plan out, you're going to get to a certain destination every day because you need that water. Mm -hmm. And so... um, I used um, a water cache service and I would have six liters of water waiting for me at each of the night camps that I chose. The trail itself through the desert was very rough. You're going in and out of canyons, up and over mountains, and it is not graded or switchbacked. I don't think they've heard, I don't think there is an, there is a uh, Hebrew word for switchback because everything just went straight up and straight down. So it was a very, very tiring trail. So I I thought, oh, I'm gonna cruise and do these many kilometers or miles in a day. And I found myself really struggling to, to meet my goal, but I had to get there because that's where my water was. In comparison to the PCT and AT. Way harder. Way harder, eh? Way, way harder, way more remote and rugged and the up and down and then all the climbing sometimes there are um rebar that's been fixed into the rocks to help you Mm -hmm. but then every time i saw that sounds very at like (laughs) yeah every time i saw the rebar i'd be like oh no this is going to be tough because it's so tough they had to put some rebar in Mm -hmm. gotcha wow so how many kilometers how long was this trail 
And the entire trail, oh, geez, I think it's about a thousand, okay. a thousand and some kilometers. Gotcha. Uh, but I, when I got closer to Jerusalem and I finished the desert section, I realized I wanted to do spend a little more time sightseeing around in that area. So I took some days off in Jerusalem. I went into Palestine and then uh, did a bit of the central area. Uh, and then I did not finish the north, so I still need to finish the northern section. And with my remaining time, I did a week hiking in the Golan Heights. Okay, okay let's, let's take a, a step back. So just like you went into North Korea, which is not an easy place to get into, um, you went into Palestine. Like, I'm assuming, like, the West Bank or Gaza? Oh, you cannot enter Gaza, uh, but you can venture into the West Bank. Okay, so that's the part of Palestine you were talking about? Yeah. Okay, so... Take us through that, like a place that yeah. that normies don't get to go. I spent two days in Palestine, um, and it's it's like when you're in Jerusalem, half of Jerusalem is in Palestine pretty much, so it's really easy to get to. Uh, the first day, I went with a hiker that I met on the Israel National Trail, and we just took the local bus into Bethlehem and did some sightseeing and then took the bus back over. And then the second day, I had to go with the tour because I went to Hebron. And Hebron is a very volatile place. Uh, people do go there on their own, but that's something I absolutely would not suggest because it's a divided, violent city. Oh, God. <laughs> and so I did a um, one-day tour in Hebron, visiting both the Palestinian and the uh, Jewish settlements there. Have you been any place like this that was so risky? Well, actually, I felt when I was on the trail, when I was walking the Israel National Trail, I felt it was a little riskier at that moment. Mm -hmm. at, well, at one time, because in Gaza, they were firing missiles at Tel Aviv. They have um, an iron shield, and so they blow up those missiles. But the area that I was traveling in was the area in between where the missiles were coming from. So I thought if they had miscalculated, oh, then, shit. yeah, yeah. So I felt that was <laughs> riskier than going into Palestine. I remember you were capturing this on your Facebook because I was following you. And, and by the way, those were amazing photos that I saw there. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember you talking a bit about that. So you encountered some people along the way. Was yeah. it that you met up with them at the beginning of it or just throughout? How did that happen? Uh, uh, I, I met them the first day. Gotcha. And, it, and it's, just, it's just so random because not so many people walk the trail. So there could be days where no one starts and there could be days where, you know, a dozen people start. You you just, you never know. And I was just uh, lucky enough to meet up with some people. Um, half were Israeli and half were internationals. And we did do some hiking together. And in the very beginning section of the desert, uh, there was times where like you had to squeeze through things where you couldn't carry your pack. And so it was helpful to have other people helping you out to kind of get the packs through like these little narrow canyon sections gotcha. and then you would squeeze and climb through. That's kind of cool. That's kind of like... That's adventurous. Yeah. Totally. It's like Jewish Utah. <laughs> You yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah, there. It there's. I've never been to Utah, but yeah. I've seen a lot of photos, and that's yeah. what some of the sections totally look like. To yeah, me. it's like a bunch of Hebrew Mormons. Like you know, you have your canyons <laughs> and your desert and your mountains. Um, obviously, in Utah, at no point in all of my trips to Utah have I ever had like rockets. <laughs> you know, I think once I was there on a Fourth of July, um, so there was uh, rockets. So maybe that counts. Um, I've seen the aftermath of um, a second story of a building blown out in um, Tunisia in the desert. But that was the aftermath. Like that was like, it's safe to be here. We can go for a coffee here. It's like your neighborhood Tim Hortons in the middle of the desert <laughs> where this was happening as you were going. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, the Israeli people just have so much more extra to think about in their day to day because of the risks that they're under. <laughs> Uh, for example, I spent the night at a commune and we slept in a kindergarten and in the kindergarten they have a bomb shelter. And so that's where the kids all nap because it's the safest place for them. And so we spent the night in the bomb shelter of the kindergarten. Yeah, security is so always bizarre. I know in the tech industry, people talk specifically about the culture of Israelis and, and how they're they're very disciplined and militant. And yet, well, everybody has productive. to serve in the military. That's right. But that just automatically carries back through their mm -hmm. everyday lives and what, makes it's, them it's, incredibly productive. And, and I think I think there's sort of that dichotomy um, like with the Israelis, because, you know, 
it's that thing where on the one hand, um, you know, they're, they're, you don't think of it like any big, bad, tough Jews, right? And then on the other hand, you've got like a nation that's been, you know, sort of under, under threat for pretty much its entire existence. So the culture of the people, right? Uh, you know, so you get these kind of like super tough and uh, then, you know, you run into an orthodox in New York City, for instance. Mm-hmm. And you don't think any of them are going to like, you know, kick ass in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so it, it 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 really is kind of like this modern uh, kind of dichotomy. One thing that I I really was impressed with in Israel was that they take the young people into the outdoors all the time. Nice, it's something just normal as part of their school education that they take them on trips, hiking, backpacking, overnighting with backpacks. And I would see like younger kids on some of the trails, and I was thinking if these were Canadian school children, half of them wouldn't come back alive. Like these kids are tough, but this is the way they've been brought up, and maybe this is something they're they're doing in preparation to when That's they cool. join the military. But either way, I I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And so, what time for the time of the year you were there? You were there in January, um, right? end February? of February, March. Gotcha. And so you were there for in the end, um, how much of that um, season was it? One month when you. Uh, I was in Israel for six weeks. Six weeks, maybe. Okay, and what were the temperatures like? Um, it varied a lot. Okay. Because um, in the desert, you know, you're you're can get up to like forty degrees Celsius, mm-hmm. but at night you can get to below freezing. So. So you're carrying a lot of gear. <laughs> and it can be very windy also in the desert. Very, um, very windy. So pretty extreme from a through hiking perspective, yeah. right? Yeah, it was very tough. Very wow. difficult. So that was, would you say that was your toughest trek by far? The, Regardless in, in of the duration? Desert section, the desert section of yeah. the Israel Trail? Yeah, the toughest like long distance trail I've ever done. Okay, cool. well, and, that, and that should be a call out to people. You know, if you've done the AT, the PCT, and you know, it's like you want you want like a new challenge as mm-hmm. you know sarah's somebody now that has done you know a big chunk of the at did you finish the pct uh, i missed a small section because of fire closure but yeah but it's we'll pretty normal it's yeah. yeah. pretty normal <laughs> and then the, you know then the cdt and if she finds that this is the toughest of anything she's done then you should go give it a shot um and try to do it yourself because you know if you're trying to rise to challenges uh, the combination of like brutal terrain, um, very scarce water, mm-hmm. and then rockets. Are there good resources to help people prepare for this? There is. There is um, a guidebook um, that pretty much everyone uses. It's this red guidebook that uh, some of the stuff in there hasn't been translated properly into mm. English. But with that book, you can get by. But there's also a very large Trail Angel Network in along the trail and that really shocked me pretty much any kind of town stop you can find someone that is going to host you there i remember also another day when i was on the israel national trail i was walking beside the uh, military training area where they train uh, people with tanks and so when i was i was walking by myself and someone someone was like waiting for a bus before i got to towards that area and they said uh did you call the military and tell them you were walking through and i was like no i didn't know i was supposed to do that and they're just kind of like was like oh, okay and then i thought whatever i'm on the trail so i was walking on the trail and then i could see all these tanks rolling to my right and uh people with uh, machine guns shooting and the tanks blowing things up and that's just as i was hiking and i was thinking this is the weirdest trail <laughs> there's there's live rounds of and tanks not oh too far away from me yeah. and then i i kind of would wave so they would know that i was like hiking over to this side so please do not aim your fire to my direction oh my god <laughs> I bet you wanted to videotape this at the same time, not. <laughs> well, yeah, I, right? I filmed a little bit of it, but mostly I was trying to like hurry and get away from get the where the tanks there. were closer. My God, yeah. that's pretty scary. And then later on that day, I went to an ashram with like a whole yeah. bunch of very alternative living people, mm-hmm. uh, like 
I like super hippies and things. And so it was such a contrast from being in this very military environment to being into this very like peace, love, welcoming, really? snowy. And were they all uh, nationals or foreigners that were there? No, the they, were, they were Israelis. Yeah. yeah they Interesting. were um, followers of Osho. Okay. Mm. Um, if you've watched that Netflix documentary, Wild Wild Country. Um, Look up quotes by Osho. Okay. They have, um, they, they focus on meditation and yoga and, you know, community living mm-hmm. and uh, vegetarian, vegan food. Yeah, a bunch of those things I'm into. Just not the vegan food. <laughs> <laughs> the food was, was wonderful, though. It was, it was. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Like I've, had, I've, had plen- I've stayed at an stuff. ashram in uh, Montreal. It's a yoga camp and the food's yeah, amazing. Yeah, no, I, I've had good vegan or vegetarian food. Yeah. I just find if I, because I've tried, you know, veganism myself <laughs> many years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I'm just getting all weak and with no energy. <laughs> There's something, you know, that, that you get from having some meats. Um, but uh, it's it's kind of interesting because in Israel, because um, of the faith, uh, you can't have um, uh, meat with your meat meat and dairy together. And so you there's uh, so many vegetarian and vegan restaurants. They have the largest number of vegans in in the world. Really? Yeah. So like, if well, because I know they can't have pork. Yeah, but they right. can't have like if like if I go to McDonald's and you get a Big Mac, the Big Mac has no cheese because they can't put the cheese with the meat. Then that's nonsense. And then you have, <laughs> and then it depends on wow. how strict um, Jewish you are, how mm-hmm. long you can wait in between. So I went to McDonald's and I want, I'm like, I want a Big Mac meal and I want a Sunday. And then they were like, okay, when should we bring out the Sunday? Because it's not because the meat shouldn't be in your stomach at the same time the dairy comes in. I'm like, just serve it together. Like, don't worry. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm cool. going to dip my fries in this fucking <laughs> yeah. Sunday, okay? Yeah, don't, don't worry. I'm cool. <laughs> you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. quite a bit of a culture shock, eh? Yeah. And then, and then I didn't understand how important um, Shabbat was. It's their... Um, their day of rest. And so Fridays at sundown, Mm -hmm. like everything stops, like everything closes, um, hardly any, like there's no buses, Mm -hmm. nothing. Oh wow. And Saturday there's nothing happening also until, um, uh, sundown on Saturday. Don't get hurt. So you have to plan like when you're getting into town because you can't go shopping. You can't, you can't buy anything to eat for yourself or, Whatever, and so for the Israelis that are uh, walking the trail, they will plan around uh, that day as well because they won't hike on that that day if they're very religious. They'll just take it as a day of rest, and you can't use electricity, um, so you can't charge your phone or, yeah. And so people have timers with the lights in their house, so they'll set the timer for when they want the lights to go on, like seven to ten p.m. And because they didn't touch the switch, it's like a workaround. Gotcha. So <laughs> yeah, those, I, those I, loopholes. Yeah, but see, I didn't. I had no idea before I went there that yeah. it was this common. So, uh, were there any things lessons learned on this trip that you were like, oh shit, um, that you had to overcome? Well, I I, le- I learned that I was. I found things easier if I could time when it was the the day of rest if I was mm-hmm. on the trail because if I was on the trail then it was just like business as usual. Mm-hmm. Otherwise waiting around kind of for the holiday to be over to continue yeah and it's a it literally it's almost like a stat holiday every week hmm. right like everything's shut yeah and um orthodox jews will also put barriers on the streets that they live in so people can't accidentally drive their cars down the street because they don't they don't even want to see vehicles moving oh wow and yeah and you can't you can't even travel like you need to stay at your home like you can't go to the village next door to visit someone you need to stay just within your village on that day because otherwise you're not resting so if you if you stay at a trail angel's house and you get there Mm -hmm. like you you're you're there like it's very rude to leave until the holiday's over interesting and is it expected that you'd spend time with them and get to know them or just stay to yourself or um well well they're usually speaking in hebrew um 
But ev- yeah, everybody was very welcoming, though. I didn't really understand uh, some of the ceremonies that they were doing during that day. But most people, they were sleeping and napping and because they, they're mm-hmm. not listening to music. They're not reading books. Mm-hmm. What else are they doing? Uh, <laughs> eating, eating a lot of food. Eating tons of food on that day. I just remember that time a couple of years ago, more than a couple of years ago, the electricity went out in North America, half of the Eastern U.S. <laughs> a lot of and babies nine were months, born. Nine months later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's like, what else are you going to do? Yeah, what but they're fuck? used to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a novelty, you know, like thousands of years ago when they started doing that. But now it's like, ugh. Moya, you stay away from me. <laughs> <That's> too predictable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the the people who who walk the trail that are um, religious, they'll carry special clothing just to wear on that day. So you'll see, like, I'll see, like, get used to seeing a girl. She's always wearing some hiking stuff. And then cool. all of a sudden, she's wearing this beautiful dress. And I'm like, wow. you had that in your pack the whole time? Yeah. Just for this day? And another thing that surprised me in Israel, people hitchhike everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even going to joke. If you're, if you're in the, like, like you, you normally, when you're hitchhiking, you're going from like city to city, but even within the city, if you just want to go down the street, like three blocks, mm-hmm. why walk? They'll hitchhike. And then to hitchhike, <clears throat> you stand on the road and you put your arm out like this. <laughs> <laughs> so just for, for listeners who can't see the visual. Um, <laughs> that looks like a real ironic. <laughs> uh, Sarah was just doing a bit of the, the Heil Hitler there. Uh. The, the Zig Heil. It, it's it well, like, a one arm. It looks like a one arm salute, but that's uh, yeah. That's I believe that's what the Germans called it too. The one arm salute. <laughs> and yeah, hitchhiking is super common, and like people will go out of the grocery store and then you think the Jews would have figured so this way? Where you are not going to be successful. <laughs> yeah, everyone. It, no. and it's very safe. Interesting. Super, super safe there. It's like yeah, it's it's <laughs> safe except for the uh, missiles. The missiles coming from you know Gaza. And the wild dogs. Those aren't safe either. Talk about that. Um, so there are wild dogs that predominantly live near the Bedouin settlements. And um, they're very unruly. And they're in gangs. And I wasn't attacked. But I know two hikers that were bit by dogs. Oh, shit. And Okay, so I remember I was walking by myself. And... Um, I, p- I passed a gang of dogs and they just kind of looked at me and I just like keep my eyes down. And I just keep going and see you later. And then um, I had there's a lot of cell service in Israel, which is also really great. And so my friend messaged me that he was like maybe half an hour behind me. So I thought, OK, I'm going to sit and wait for you. So I sat down and I let, all of a sudden I saw him come over a rise running and he's like, Sarah, go go get a move on and i was like what what is happening and i'm still sitting there and he's like get up go and then so i get up behind him there's like four or five dogs chasing him holy shit (laughs) and i was just like oh so i hurried and then the dogs got to a certain point and they didn't run any further i guess that was like the end of their territory but um he got bit that day by the dogs and actually, I met a girl on... Are they more territorial, do you think? Or is it more because they can sniff the food? Or I, You know what? I think wild dogs don't like men. I think... I, because because I, I don't think they go after women as much as men. And hmm. so the, the, um, this hiker, um, Luke, he's British military and kind of maybe mm-hmm. put on kind of mm-hmm. like a bad vibe to the dogs. And that's why they chased him. But when I was on the CDT, I met a German girl who did part of the Jordan mm-hmm. uh, Trail, which is very similar to Israel National Trail. And she said that the dogs there were even worse. And um, she's she used to stab them with her hiking pole and she said she may have killed a few of them but it was either her or the dogs Holy shit. on that trail <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's what i've heard on other trails like the at or more maybe more the pct and the cdt is what? that cows and tra- uh, dogs not from you cows yeah who who's getting attacked by cows uh some cows are aggressive <laughs> <laughs> that's what i heard like you don't have to worry about bears but that's maybe it's on the CDT. I heard that. Well, or you know what it was? It was across uh, the U.S. Somebody did. It was on Backpacker Radio. Somebody talked about going across the U.S. for fun, and um, ran in, and their issue was more dogs and cows. 
Yeah, dogs can definitely be a, a pain oh, in the ass, no, no pun intended. I, I just think there's way less wild dogs in America than mm. maybe Israel Jordan. So talk to me about security, though, in the desert. Like, did anybody that you came across that you backpacked with, they... Were they armed? Do they talk about that? Uh, were, was worried about hijacking or I guess maybe not, but no, um, I, I didn't meet anyone that was carrying a gun. I, I really or stressed the importance of security or, Oh, um, the villagers. Okay. They were the ones that were most concerned about me being a woman alone. Um, actually in the Golan Heights, they were like even three times more concerned up there because it's not only, um, bad people, but there's also landmines and the proximity to Syria. Yeah, it's funny. It's like with a lot of things, it's like, it's not a problem till it's a problem. Yeah. But, um, I actually in Montana on the CDT, I, I saw more hikers carrying guns than anywhere else anywhere in the world i've For ever sure. seen yeah so well because it is montana yeah in montana <laughs> if you're if you're a local montanan you have a gun if you're on a trail yeah it's that's big, the way it goes <laughs> it's big sky country and big gun country <laughs> uh. wow but um there's uh, many of the israelis that i worked with the, they are uh, walked with they had just finished their service mm-hmm. in the military gotcha. so for them it's a little their timeline their youth timeline is different than ours. Like they finish high school, then they're in the military for three years. Then they take time off to do what they want to do. And then later on in life, they go to university and then they look for a partner and get married and have kids. So all the um, Jewish walkers that I met that they had served in the military and almost all of them said they never want to touch a gun again. Like from their service in their military, it's just totally turned them off of all that. Which wow. is interesting. And I think because theirs is a non-voluntary military. Yeah. Whereas, say, you take the Canadian or uh, United States military, anybody that's serving, it, it's voluntary. You signed up. How, how long in Israel are they required to be in, in, the, in the military? Is it a couple of years? Three? Three, three years. That's three years of your life. Um, the, only, the, only group, the only group that's ex- exempt from joining the military are the Orthodox Jews. And it's it's been a political issue late um, lately in the last I'd say decade or so mm-hmm. um, with them wondering if they should change that because um, uh, I met a um, military uh, officer and he explained to me that when Israel was formed there was only four hundred Orthodox families left and so when the country was formed they said oh, wow. you know let's preserve this culture let's pr- protect their way of life and they'll they'll be exempt from the military but now. Now they they have large families and they're actually a very large group in the country. And so for some Israeli people, they, they look at their little kids and they think my little girl is going to be in the military and that little girl over there won't. And mm-hmm. they feel it's unfair. Well, it is. I'm a, got nothing to do with Israel and I'm not a citizen or anything. But I, <laughs> I'm perfectly willing to voice my opinion. <laughs> oh, man. So, um with respect to through hiking, like did any of your gear have to change or would you recommend people really strongly reconsider changing? Um, well, I am, I was very happy not to be using a Cuban fiber backpack, a DCF backpack Mm. because of all the sharp rocks and tight, tight corners and climbing and throwing your pack down and then climbing down. Not rugged enough. Yeah. I, it, like, unless you're very careful <laughs> with your pack and I'm not, I just want to go, Kinda you know, like I don't want to take the extra step to keep it safe. And so, um, I was glad to have a more durable backpack gotcha. and, um, taking an ultralight backpack is also difficult because of the water carries. Cause you're carrying mm. five or six liters a day. And that's very, very heavy. And you don't drink a lot of water to begin with, do you? No, I don't. But I, yeah. I was drinking my six liter allotment. So for others, for sure. they, they'd probably carry more. Yeah, because uh, some people were carrying eight, eight to ten liters. Uh, one time, <laughs> one of my friends, she had fourteen liters on her, and I was like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "I drink a lot. I'm very thirsty. I never want to run out. I don't care. I'm going to be carrying fourteen liters." Holy shit! That's like yeah. thirty pounds of water. <laughs> And then she's doing the same climbs I'm doing. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's like it, when you get those more extreme environments. Yeah. And then, you know. And the temperature it, ranges. Yeah. And sure. if you've ever run into the thing of running out of water, then you're like, 
I'm not fucking running out of water, so I will carry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then then all of a sudden it's like you're like a pack mule carrying the ocean on your back. And then the Israelis, they don't carry the backpacker food. They'll, they 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 are taking like things that are wonderful for them to eat so they're taking like fresh fruit fresh vegetables like sometimes it'd be like three days in and girl p- pull out a tomato and i've been like you've been carrying to- a fresh tomato this whole time and um it was co- unripened <laughs> <laughs> yes it take your time it's okay and coffee is very important like they have to have like, french press the long <laughs> coffee breaks as part of the day well myself and the american and british um guy the i was British make their with. tea no we were we were, <laughs> we were just kind of like like let's stop for 10 minutes eat a snack continue on and you know no the israelis they'll walk long long days to get in all these wonderful relaxing breaks so it was it was just it was a different speed of hiking uh compared to say american through hiking well i think i think part of what you probably run into too especially if it's a lot of people who've just finished military service mm-hmm and it's it's that that journey of discovery for yourself. It's like, what the fuck am I rushing for? Mm-hmm. Right? Like it's 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 enjoy the experience. Yeah. It's bask in the experience. Um, you know, for you, it's like, well, I have to finish this one because then I got to get on a plane for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. because literally, you know, you were saying during dinner, it's like, I have a hard time remembering where I'm going because I don't even know where I've been. <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know so so that 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 gestation time of like do something and then let it sit you know because you've gotten back into a mundane uh routine you almost don't have that so it's like the interesting bits you know because most of us remember the interesting bits because we get lots of blah in middle mm-hmm. you know in between mm-hmm. you've got interesting bit interesting bit interesting 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 and then it's like well, if it's all interesting, none of it's interesting. <laughs> you know, like trying to trying to like you know break it all apart and and remember things. Mm-hmm. You know, or or even the way that our memory works to actually record it. Yeah, that's why I make YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, because at least you can go back and go. Oh, I remember that part where I lost a sock. <laughs> it sounds a bit transformative. This trail, you know, physically, uh, mentally, like even culturally, and yeah, it, it whipped me into shape like really fast because i wasn't used to hiking using my arms gotcha. like not at all yeah and then you know <laughs> i was forced to <laughs> I had to climb down canyon walls dry waterfalls that were um very slick slippery rocks and and i'd never i'd never done bouldering or rock climbing before in my life <laughs> <laughs> so i was just kind of thrown into it Oh my god! That's kind of cool, though. It's like the because those things that you don't badass. expect, yeah. those are the things that kind of like almost forge you, right? Because if you know exactly what to expect, oh, I know this is going to be hard, but this part, you know, da, 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 you know, where where it's like it's already cataloged in your mind. It's getting like punched in the face with shit that you don't expect, mm-hmm. where you're like, well, I got to get down in somehow, <laughs> and you know, then you just figure it out. And yeah. that's where that transformative thing comes in, right? Like, because if everything is like, well, you know, and then the next thing I do is just a little harder than the last thing I did. And then it's just a little harder and a little, and it's perfectly organized. Mm-hmm. You don't get any transformative growth, right? But it's like, you turn one way, you get smacked in the face. You turn the other way, you get smacked <laughs> in the face. You go, okay, I'm going to duck now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it, like it, it, it's that kind of thing where, where the unexpected you know, still shouldering it and getting it through, that's where we really grow from. There is one point when we were in this narrow canyon and you and there's water and you had to swim to the other side to a, a metal ladder and climb out of it. And I was the only one with inflatable uh, pat, mattress pad. Nice. So, because we got to it, and everyone's like, "Oh no!" Because because they have very very heavy packs. They're like, "How are we gonna do this?" Because yeah, because you can't you can't walk. It's it's very very deep. You have to actually full out swim across it. And so I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna blow up my pad, and then um, we'll push." We'll push the backpacks across on the pad, and it worked. No one's pack went into the water, even yeah, though nice. there was some close calls. Yeah, but, yeah. But teamwork, we eh? Got through it. Wow. So, do you think you could have done it on your own? I mean, you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier a couple of spots where 
It would have been tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there was, there is maybe I would say like five times. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was almost paralyzed by fear. Gotcha. And if there wasn't a person nearby to say it's okay, or I'll grab your hand from the other side, jump across this. Yeah, I don't know if I could have done it. Yeah. Yeah, so FYI, people. <laughs> yeah. on, put on your good girl, uh, your big girl pants. Yeah. No, you've done a lot. You've done a lot. You've and seen just, a lot. That's just in Israel. So what we're, what, really what we're saying is research it and go to Israel. And the Golan Heights Trail is very yeah. nice. And if you have an umbrella, <laughs> missiles can't hit you. <laughs> put a smiley face on the umbrella or besides, a like it's not like like these are guided <laughs> missiles that the palestinians are sending into israel hmm. right so what you have is almost like like think of it as like a, a japanese kabuki theater only real so <laughs> the palestinians go fuck you you took our land and then they shoot missiles you know into into israel mm-hmm. you know i'm quoting um, but you know Tel Aviv, whatever. And then the Israelis have like the Iron Dome defensive system, yeah. right? That has like missiles and machine guns that shoot the missiles out of the air. So for the most part, like nobody's actually dying. They, they're just putting on like a show. It's like a fireworks show. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> um, the, the the people who end up dying are actually Palestinians afterwards. Oh yeah, because no, Israel no, no I. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Israelis go. Oh yeah, you you know, and then they then they send then real it's missiles. Apocalypse and, now, and you see ten helicopters in yeah. the sky going towards. Gaza. And 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 then the planes, and then that they're yeah. all in the tanks. Okay, like, don't get me wrong. Like I, yeah. I understand the history, but but that initial sort of dance isn't like. Oh my God! The Palestinians are terrible. They sent missiles, and then you know, like then all these people are dying. If they just left it to the pantomime. Of we do this and you do this and then it's like a thing. Everybody'd be fine, but then then the part is you know the Palestinians blow up a school bus and then the the uh, Israelis roll the tanks into Gaza mm-hmm. and then we have you know a humanitarian crisis uh, and open air prisons and you know. This is a hiking podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about, are we going to get like a uh, censored out of, <laughs> this is not on YouTube. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't care. I, actually, you know. um, I, I, I was like, I think seven days on the Golan Heights Trail and I only put up two videos because I, I got kind of busy, but um, censored. Y- YouTube like came at me, like reported for like, oh, controversial, but I'm not even yeah. doing anything controversial. I was just hiking. I was yeah. showing like plants. And maybe yeah, some yeah. rusted tanks along the way. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. see, and that, that's sort of one of the problems you run into with YouTube. And this is kind of the thing that I kind of like with podcasts because, like, they just sort of go, whatever. Um, but, you know, you run into the thing where, where uh, if, you, if you're telling the news or you're just telling a thing that happened, um, if it's slightly controversial... Right, you know, so it's got Gaza or Israel or you know, West Bank or you know any of yeah, these yeah. any of these keywords. Like if you went, I'm hiking in the United States Southwest, <laughs> and it was the exact same video. There's like, oh yeah, yeah, here's all your YouTube money. <laughs> right, they don't give a shit, but it's like, oh no, somebody's gonna be pissed. And and the problem is, it's just an algorithm that's choosing it. Yeah. Right, they're like. Like, dig, 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 dig. And then <laughs> demonetized. And then I put it for review, and then it went back up, and then they put it back out again. You know? Mm. And then it's the yeah. thing, it's like, wait, I'm walking across the country. But then it very well, because the way their, their thing works is if somebody complains, or if the algorithm catches it. Yeah. Right? So if somebody flags it. So you could have somebody, and, and you know, don't get me wrong, I understand from a... a uh, from their point of view, you know, but if you get a Palestinian person watches on YouTube and goes, fuck them, <laughs> flag, you know, I don't want people thinking that, yeah. you know, hiking in Israel is good, mm-hmm. right? Gotcha. Because it's a thing where they have so little that they can sort of like, um, you know, sort of fight back with. Mm-hmm. Because for the most part, the and this is sort of the 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 issue and I don't have an answer to it, okay? Like, I'm, you know, but but the fact that the West Bank and Gaza are, for all intents and purposes, open-air prisons, right? 
that because the people can't come and go freely they can't yes. import freely yeah yeah they if you're in the west bank you can't go to gaza and vice versa yeah you know so so it's one of those things like you are um the descendants of people who used to live here and then some other people when it came in and went fuck you you're off in the sides uh and then they you know you're like uh i used to live here <laughs> you know like and there's this and, and I think this is where, where they run into the problem. Like, this should have been dealt with generations ago. Because now what you have is people who weren't actually the original people that get kicked out going, my people get kicked out. We're stuck over here. And, and you know, you, you run into the thing where, where they can't travel freely. Um, you know, a lot of, like, if you ask the average American you know, what a Palestinian is, you're going to get people who are kind of educated going, oh, you know, and get into the history of, you know, there were a people that lived in the Middle East and after World War II, they were pushed aside and blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to get people, they're terrorists. It's like, you know, and and that sort of that, that interesting, I don't know if interesting is, you know, the right way to put it, but, but as kind of an outside observer, like it's a shit show, right? Because the average Israeli is not a bad person. The average Palestinian isn't, but you have this kind of like locked together kind of sh- mess that mm-hmm. there isn't an easy solution to. Um, yes. Yeah. Interesting, though, that they have these hiking trails or through through hiking trails, right? That people can walk alongside some tanks and yeah, military yeah. bases but I think, in the Golan Heights. Yeah. And there there is also a long distance trail in Palestine. It's called uh, Abraham's Way or Abraham's Path to Hebron. But I, but you need um, you need a pal- you would need a Palestinian guide and probably an armed escort. I would say if you were to walk that, so it would be very expensive. Mm-hmm. So Golem Heights, how is that different from the rest of the trail, the Israel Trail, National um, Trail? So it's its own trail on its own. It's a, this beautiful green plateau area, very lush. Uh, when I was okay. there, it was filled with wildflowers, and um, that plateau is a, also a very strategic spot. So uh, when they had the war about 50 years ago, uh, Israel was supposed to return it to Syria, but um, it's strategic. So they kind of held on to it. Psych! And um, so, but 50 years have passed and there's still Syrians that live in refugee camps along the Syrian border, right? Kind of next to where the Golan Heights area is. Did you see that? I could see the cities and the lights and things. Yeah. yeah, certainly when I was when I was up high, Interesting. I could see into Syria pretty clearly. Gotcha. And it was the the, the scene of the largest tank battle in history. It, like so many tanks, and Israel was greatly outnumbered, but they ended up winning. And so there's tons mm-hmm. and tons of bunkers along the way that mm-hmm. are just open. You can walk into the bunkers mm-hmm. as you're hiking, explore mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And um, there's destroyed villages that you walk through. There's houses that belong to Syrians that Israeli families moved into that came from Poland or Germany or Austria after World War II. And they've they've been um, farming the land and raising families there since. So it's it's very, very interesting historically, politically, and mm-hmm. also from a military standpoint to walk the trail. Would you want to go back? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I I do need to finish Israel National Trail. Um, I did have a problem leaving from Tel Aviv. Um, I was flagged for very high security risk, and I I was interrogated, and I was um, searched very thoroughly. All my things were searched, and they didn't even let me carry on any items on the plane except for my phone and my wallet. Oh, wow. What what was that? Um. Uh, basically, I think it's because there's two things they didn't like. They didn't like that I stayed in a hostel in Tel Aviv. So they might think while I was in the hostel, somebody could have put something into my bag, blah, blah, blah. So that's one strike. And they also did not like that uh, my father's first name is Muhammad. Oh, really? Yeah. So if your father's first name is Muhammad, basically you get to like super strict screening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind like of I a was... bit of profiling, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's, to me, that's laziness. It's like that that's the algorithm gone wrong. It's like mm. ah <laughs> you know it, it they're was, Canadian but first name Muhammad, so bump him to the top of the list. Yeah. 
It was me versus, versus like six Israeli airport officers. And they went through everything. Like they opened up a book and they turned mm-hmm. every single page in the book looking inside the book. They took like feathers from inside my down quilt and they tested the feathers separately to my quilt. Like like craziness. I thought I was being processed for prison. Oh, and wow. I couldn't because I couldn't leave. I was trying to leave the country. How long did that take? Uh, that I was uh, that Being I was there yeah. doing that like yeah. between two and a half to three hours, and then when I was walking to the gate, like I you knew must that they nervous. were following me to the gate while I went on the plane. Yeah, and just think that one time when we got on the airport and you reported that you had some produce and you had to go to the back area. <laughs> That's nothing. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was I was like, and I said, can I have my sweater for the plane? And they're like, no. And I, and, I, and I said, why not? They said security measures. I said, well, can I have my granola bar for the plane? And they're like, no. And I said, can I eat it now? And they said, no. And I said, why not? Security measures. And I was just like, mind blown. So they packed all my belongings because I was just taking carry on back because mm. you know ultralight backpacker they packed all my belongings in two boxes and they're like you will you will meet these boxes when you arrive in Toronto like I I had like my book I couldn't take on the plane to read mm-hmm. nothing they they're like no you can't travel with anything we're taking it away from you yeah Oh no, I'd be a little bit grateful I was getting the heck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that was the only I problem I'd I be had like, okay. when I was in Israel. So next time I go, I'm just checking everything and check luggage, except for a few things. I don't think they're gonna let you back in. <laughs> also, I don't know. Yeah. You know what? I talked to a lot of people who had who were yeah. interrogated even coming into the country and they were put in like like prison cells for five, six hours in the airport. Holy shit. Yeah. Well the thing is, so, if you notice that that uh AL the Israeli air, airline mm-hmm. hasn't had big hijackings and anything. <laughs> I think part of what it is is like, oh, if we can be on the side of being more, you know, like friendly or don't take chances at all. Mm-hmm. I think they've got it, the dial turned to the don't take chances at all. Yeah, because you have a you have a interview when you enter the the airport, and then they put a sticker, and then the sticker decides what level of security screening you're going to get. And so I had like level six, which is like super high. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, and I think that's one of the things where where you and I traveling, Catherine. Uh, pretty much everything's like, yeah, yeah, go. Go. <laughs> Why are you going camping in the winter? <laughs> yeah, like, we, we get weird questions. We don't get like probed. No, you know, they just look at us. Look at us like you're crazy. Okay, keep going. Because <laughs> I think I think what you run into is like you know, especially like with us flying together. Mm-hmm. This sort of look is like two middle aged white people. Yeah, you're the new face of Al Qaeda. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um, God. You know, so so uh, it, it, it's one of those things. Anybody. Uh, who doesn't acknowledge like the idea of like white privilege? Yeah, has never as a white person crossed through the border <laughs> because like have we been like harassed at all? No. Yeah, uh, I, I I shouldn't say that. Uh, when we were going into Vegas the last time, they mm-hmm. scanned my carry on, and I had to pull out a bunch of rock climbing gear to prove that that a, a nut tool wasn't a knife. That's fair. Oh, yeah, I think it's totally fair. But fair. I'm we had saying, a lot of tools in there. Yeah. yeah. You know, we yeah. had all these bags just to, to, to reduce the, like, our carry-on or yeah. our, our checked luggage. Yeah. Um, all this metal rock climbing gear, like carabiners and everything, and was you, all in my bag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they made me take it out and show them. Yeah. And then afterwards, they thought it was cool. I'm surprised they didn't keep <laughs> the nut cleaner because it, 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 it is sharp. You could probably easily stab somebody with it. You can't you know? stab anybody with it. It's a hook. How do you stab anybody with a hook? Just dig at them and pull. I don't know, man. You can use a Throw shoelace. A, chair. a shoelace, <laughs> Throw a chair. you know, yeah. very easily. Like so all this and stuff is so, so stupid. Yeah, I gotta ask though before we move on. Um, did that really transform you in any way? Like that? That's that sounds like a pretty intense um, trip. It, it um, the the airport incident leaving or everything. Just, um. Well, it yeah it it, it was. It, Israel is a land of extremes. Yeah. And that's the best way of putting it. Okay. So I just, I had so many extreme experiences while I was there. All right. All right. So you came back 
home or did yeah. you go right to the CDT? No, I came home for five days and mm-hmm. then I flew to El Paso, Texas. All right. Hey, El Paso. And then I, I stayed with a, a trail angel for a night or two. And then I took the train to Lordsburg, New Mexico. And gotcha. from there, I took the shuttle and started the CDT. Nice. So talk about that. That's an exciting adventure uh, that they say is the hardest in North America outside of the ACT. Sorry, AC, AT, what, what is the ACT? AT, AT, is there this MPCT. trail I have none called the ACT? <laughs> uh, the CDT is definitely the wildest of the three major trails. That's a continental divide trail, yeah, by the way. Continental yeah, continental divide. Yeah. Mexico to Canada. Yep. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, last year was the worst snow year in 30 years. And so of course. it was... <laughs> It was out of control. You couldn't have, no one had a normal through hike, not one hiker. Everyone yeah. had to make concessions, jump around, or if they did go through, they, they really struggled and put their life at risk because it was, it was, the snow was insane. In Colorado, some areas were 700% of normal oh on the God. trail, 700% snow, <clears throat> uh, snowpack. Yeah. Wow. And then all the avalanches caused the trails also to get super messed up from trees and crews couldn't get in there. And Wow. So hard. as far as the uh, AT and PCT goes, how many kilometers? Like this is the longest trail. Yes. Right? Uh, um, what are the follow, stats? If you follow the official line, it's 3,100 miles. Okay. But with the CDT, there's all these alternatives. C- the CDT is kind of more like a choose your own adventure trail. The AT is like the strictest. Like you got those white blazes. You're just following white, white, white. Okay. PCT, you don't have as many markings, but it's pretty, pretty well a determined path. Yeah. This one you know you just do what you feel like is right <laughs> you just gotta head north yeah yeah you just it's it's more like um actually if you look on the cdt website to claim that you're a finisher you need to stay within 50 miles of the continental divide on, holy shit yeah so on either side so all that flexibility and so you know like um even in the first few weeks i took a, a big alternative um the cdt goes into a mountain range or you can do an area of the gila river mm-hmm. and so everybody 95 percent of hikers do the gila river because it's shorter but mm-hmm. it's also very different than every other environment along the trail something different uh you're in a river canyon you're crossing the canyon i think it's like if you do stay in the low route the entire time like 250 60 times you cross that river <laughs> yeah yeah and it's and because of the snow melt year the river was raging it was insane wow and so you were doing that again mostly on your own or did you hook up with other people or how did that go um for the first two days i was well most of the first day and for the second day um it's uh, the water is higher it gets lower as you as you go up um i was around people because it's very unsafe because there's no yeah. trail there's no trail at all. There's no yeah. cairns that say, this is the good place to cross. Gotcha. You just kind of look at the water and you just hope for the best that you're not going to go underwater when you walk through because you can't see the bottom because it's yeah. all churned up. That's the way it should be. Going. It's wild. <laughs> it's very wild. A certain amount of attrition should happen. <laughs> I'm, a few, I'm, I'm a few of the, no drowned. A few of the slow Seriously. kids shouldn't make it home. And I, don't, I don't think anyone drowned in the Gila. There were... Actually, uh, I don't know if anyone died along the CDT this year. On the PCT, for sure, yeah. Well, but CDT and ADT, and AT, AT there's too, that stabbing. The, the, the crazy guy with the machete. Yeah, like. yeah. But the CDT is mainly experienced backpackers that have their stuff dialed yeah, in because they've most people have done either the at or the pct before so they have an idea what they're biting off so the big thing is the navigation because really like you said there are no trail markers so you're taking mm-hmm. you know you're you're navigating i hear that you can expect to get lost at least once in a day is that would you <laughs> t- t- tell us about that yeah um there are there are markers usually they're at like major kind of like road crossings. sometimes you'll see them from time to time along trees but you can't, you can't rely on them. And of course, if you take an alternative route, which you're taking alternatives all the time, you're not on the CDT. So there's absolutely no CDT markers. And um, how that make you feel? Did you love that? Um, at first, it, it frustrated me because because I have to keep bring, taking out my phone and checking the GPS. There's there's some hikers they would set a timer, so every ten minutes their phone would t- chime, and so they could check their position. 
Because that's how how easy it was to get lost. Like in the, the boot heel in the desert, there's sometimes no defined trail. There's just sh- shrub bush. And you can't tell like with footprints or any of that. And you're just kind of like, I think I'm going in this general direction. So I'm just going to walk this way for for like half a mile and see what happens. And then you'll check and be like, oh, crap, that was half a mile the wrong way. And then you readjust and then. Holy shit. So you're going your through. Way. How much of that is desert? Um... Um, Most of New Mexico. Um, a lot. Well, yeah, southern New Mexico is pretty much all desert. So how many kilometers is that ish? I like how are you? What are you talking? Like know. a week, two weeks, a couple I weeks, a couple weeks. Yeah, three you don't want to get fucking maybe. lost in the desert <laughs> with no water. Well, and-, <laughs> and then okay, so there are people who do do this trail as a first time thing. Oh my god! And there is people who are getting rescued. Ev- like. Every, almost every day well i wouldn't say almost every day there is someone who there was one day where three people got rescued in one day like when the first day first or second day starting out yeah because the thing is when you're doing it through <laughs> hike you can sort of have a a, a bad day mm-hmm. right and a, or, or like a a, a quarter life midlife crisis whatever you want to call it and go oh i'm gonna go do the at <laughs> right you take however you get to to georgia amico and little falls you start up and you know a couple days you, you know there's water everywhere um it's rugged terrain but there's water everywhere every three to five days you cross a road that you can hitchhike into town mm-hmm. right um or you might even go right through you know like the the um the noc like literally the trail walks through a store <laughs> <laughs> for most of us. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so it's one of those things where, where mm-hmm. y- y- without knowing what you're doing, you can fake it and learn it on the way. Mm-hmm. Um, PCT, a little less. CDT, yeah. like if you have no clue about navigation, you're fucked. Well, yeah, you will, uh, border control will find you. Yeah. You, you know, you're lucky you're starting out that you're try, to You're trying to border. illegal. You're trying to <laughs> illegally emigrate to Mexico. <laughs> I'm trying to get across there. It's like, no, you're in the States, okay? Like, you stupid Canadian, go that way. <laughs> yeah, border control rescues a n- number of hikers that are like way off path, and then I don't know, they have drones oh, wow. or whatever, and they they see them on the drones, and they're yeah. like, "So, what was your navigation skills like before this?" Um, well, you know what, I'm I'm a cheater. I use the GPS. I don't use paper maps. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, yeah, but my navigation s- skills, like I had, like kind of like a sense of where to go, but the continental divide definitely hone things more for me and then later on in the trail you know i just would just kind of like i'm just gonna have fun and go off trail and follow this creek i can see it on the topo map Mm -hmm. and i can see the contour lines like i might get cliffed out i might not i'm just gonna go on an adventure so i started doing a lot of adventuring and i would i didn't would never do that before on the other trails because i was trying to follow the exact trail to be as true as i can but on the cdt it's like sounds like fun it's like a free-for-all yeah so what kind of gp did you use or was it your phone was it what what did you use i use my phone so gut hooks um atlas guides they make a lot of guides for hiking trails so i use that one as well as um jonathan lay he's a hiker that he made a series of paper maps Mm -hmm. and then so the paper maps are also available in electronic form on avenza so i could um download those maps and then i could see my gps position right on on the paper map on my phone gotcha so, and good yeah. battery backup. Yeah, uh, two battery banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't fuck yeah. around. Yeah. With that. No, 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 no. I, I never ran out of power once. Like I, I will conserve that. To yeah, make sure. especially when you're doing videos and photos and stuff like that, right? Yeah, because if you go the wrong way, like I don't, I don't know if they would ever really. F- they it would be very difficult to find you the if smell. you went off the wrong. The smell. Uh, (laughs) the animals would find you (laughs) i never like i kind of smelt like dead things a few times um but one time early on in the trail when i was in the boot hill i I passed by a dead cow and (laughs) the smell was so bad it got up into my nostrils i threw up quite a few times and i never had that and then i took off running because i'm like i need to get away from this smell and then i was throwing up as i was running 
away from this dead no cow way. that looked like half its body was exploded and there is birds all eaten out of it. Yeah. And then I check my GPS. I'm like, oh, great. Now I have to walk an extra mile to get back to the trail. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> but, it, well, that's, uh, it, and, but it is one of those weird southern U.S. things of like ranchers go, hey, there's this place with no grass. We're going to let all our cows out. <laughs> I, I can't believe the environments that the cows were living in. Yeah. yeah. Like like the desert, the rivers, top of mountains over 10,000 feet. Like, I'm like, really? cow, cows are hardy animals. Yeah, but it, but it, but it's more the idea, like these farmers, because it's mm. cattle herds, yeah. right? And the ranchers just go, well, if I let them out here, I don't have to pay for grazing rights, because it's BLM land usually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and of course, then you end up with the Bundys and you know all that kind of shit that went on. Um, but 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 you run into this thing where it's like, it's one thing if you let the cows go in the prairies, you know, there's fucking grass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because um, when we were down, did we run into any cows in no, Utah? No. Um, no. But, but you saw those places where they put the fences. Yeah, we did. Yeah, in the middle of the desert. It yeah. was really weird. Yeah, yeah, cows. And there's are like crazy. scrub, like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm grateful for those cows because most of my water were... Sarah the, killed them and no, ate them. <laughs> no, no, no. The uh, cow tanks. Yeah. That's right. That's where I was I was getting water from. Yeah. So they have solar wells or windmill wells mm-hmm. that um, bring up water from the ground. Gotcha. Because without it, you know, there's no water out there. It's the desert. That's, That's an so interesting cool. idea, too. Like, you wouldn't be able to, as us hikers, we wouldn't be able to cross the desert if you didn't have farmers or ranchers letting their cattle out so therefore yeah. they put in some solar windmills you yeah. know water yeah. wells or whatever you want to call it um and the the big old you know yeah. steel uh swimming pools mm-hmm. that collect all the water the cows come to these places because the cows know where they are yeah and then we have to go filter the grossest <laughs> fucking water yeah. with dead animals inside all right, all right all right so what do you use to filter uh, I was using the Be Free. Um, it's like the Catadine mm-hmm. uh, Be Free five. one. Is that <laughs> the one you use? Yep. Yeah, I yeah. really and like it. And if it's if if I'm filtering from something super gross like a cattle tank, I'll do Be Free, filter it, and then I'll drop a chemical tab like a chlorine dioxide tablet in. Wait 20 minutes, and then I'm guaranteed anything's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That is like you know having sex with somebody in you know Southeast Asia <laughs> and double wrapping it. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like you filter, then you chemical treat. I don't want to get none of the none of the the, the creepy crawlies, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because you know you can run and throw up because of the smell of cows. <laughs> you can r- throw up comfortably because of like too many supplements or whatever you had the other day. But like nothing, I hate more than throwing up. Yeah. Like, I will take diarrhea for the rest of my life if I never have to throw up again. <laughs> like, like, and I don't know what it is, but there's something about throwing up. Yeah. Right? Because, like, like, diarrhea is like, I can make it to a toilet. <laughs> throwing up means I have no control over my life anymore. It's just gone. Especially when you're dizzy. Man, have you ever been sick on a trail? Um, maybe end up. While she thinks about that, brilliant, brilliant transition. Like that was so fucking good. I just want to acknowledge it. I'm just saying. He normally hates my transition, but that was. I just. just But that was so good. Like that was just so. Like I know I wrecked it, but that was so good. So you just wrecked it. Thanks. I know. I know. But Mm. anyway. But it gave Sarah time to think. Yeah. (laughs) You said Nepal? Oh. Yeah, maybe Nepal. And oh, I was I was uh, sick um, when I was summiting Kilimanjaro. And that was like the absolute worst time Actually, to get sick. I forgot sick. you did that. I don't think we talked about that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was the probably like the worst I ever felt because I was at altitude. very high altitude. And then like when I, it was, yeah, I don't know. I started trekking. And sometimes when you start trekking, you, yeah. it might be too much information, but your body is not moving the way it normally moves. Yeah. And so you don't really have any like bowel movements and you just mm-hmm. go days without it. And you're like, well, I don't know. I feel okay. I can't mm-hmm. do anything mm-hmm. about it. And then so I think 
that's when I was a few hours from the top of Kilimanjaro. That's when my body was like, now it's time. Oh, shit. And, <laughs> and it was uh, all of a sudden this <laughs> African drum beat kicks in. <laughs> and then it's like you feel it down low. It's like, uh oh. And it's. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Uh oh. <laughs> And there's no boulders, and it was just like scree, but the sun hadn't come up yet. And so there was just this train of headlamps going up to the top oh, to summit. And I'm like, I didn't want to get lost. So I swear I went like maybe like five steps off trail. And I was there for maybe like 45 minutes. Oh my and God. So everybody was trekking by in their headlamps. I'm like, no one shine this way. Did no you turn, one look. Did you at no least turn yours look. off? Yeah, I turned yeah. mine off. So I was. I don't exist now. I was like the invisible woman. You're like there that is. kid that if you close your eyes, you don't see me. It's like a, <laughs> the ostrich puts her head in the sand. It's like, they won't know I'm shitting everywhere. I was like, worst timing ever. <laughs> I was, I was so that's, angry. That's classic. That that, that that should be on Backpacker Radio because that is the best shit story I've ever heard of. Listen, and don't feel bad. <laughs> I've only peed my pants, but on a rock climbing thing. But yeah. there's that. But uh, I and I can only claim that I, I, I've never because one of the one of my claims to fame as an adult is that I've never shit my pants as an adult. Um, but it's because when I had you know like a norovirus. You know, where basically you have no control over your bowels. I wore a garbage bag as a kilt. And so if you're not wearing pants, you can't shit them. <laughs> um, so I have times. And luckily, th- this was years ago when I was on the AT the first time. I'm, I'm trekking along wearing a garbage bag as a kilt. No pants, no underwear. Because, you know, what's the point? <laughs> um, and literally, like, nothing works. Like, you know, normally, like, you know. I got, I got a firm booty. Like, I can clench that <laughs> shit. Imodium? Imodium didn't exist back then? Uh, it didn't work anyway. Like, literally, it was like, oh, water? You took water in? Oh, luckily, it's raining, because we're just going to wash it off your legs now. <laughs> <laughs> and you just keep walking. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> literally, you drink, and about 15, 20 minutes later, dribble. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, what's your shit story? I don't have one. Well, then you haven't been going out long <laughs> Apparently, I've only had a pee story, but everybody knows that already. Yeah, yeah, we already know your pee story of... I'm so My you, she-wee didn't fit. Yeah, you don't know the pee story. No, you don't. So, I so, was rock climbing. Yeah, and we're going up. Of course, I drank water. What route are we doing? Cat in the hat. And that's right. Yeah. Surprised I remember, remember I'm that. Just checking. <laughs> and because, of course, when I'm scared, I drink lots of water. And it was, it was sunny out, right? Mm-hmm. And so it was my first time going like super high, like 400, 500 feet. Uh, yeah, and it was my turn to go, and he's up ahead, like a, t- a couple hundred feet. So I'm like, shit, I got, I got to go pee. And right? you can't, you're far enough away, you can't communicate yelling. So we just use like tugs of the rope. Yeah, okay. three tugs means go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, long story short, I couldn't get it in the right spot because I was all harnessed in. It was mm-hmm. super tight. So yeah. then I'm trying to pee, and it's going everywhere. And mine's like, just go. So I, I go, and of course these people are rappelling down. They're all laughing because they know exactly. I think they've been there too. Okay. So I basically it took me for it was like a three minute pee because I had to go. <laughs> and so, anyways, that's what happened. I yeah. Like and I'm, I, meanwhile, I'm up at the, like I'm way up on the cliff. I'm anchored in, and it's like the whole point is about efficiency. <sighs> like she goes, then Ryan goes, and we go, 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 and then we get to the top. And it's yeah, like that's, that's you funny. know yeah, we don't want to be a poop story. I have a pee story. Yeah, and and and, yeah. and it's like. So, and she, she's not giving me any signals back. So, I give her like three tugs of the rope means go. I'm trying to go pee. I'm trying to relax. But she doesn't like give me three tugs back. So, I just keep tugging. <laughs> and tug. Meanwhile, so what I'm picturing when she finally gets up to me, it's like, yeah, I just peed my pants. Uh, <laughs> it was the whole time. Like, imagine trying to pee when somebody's like, dunk, dunk, dunk. <laughs> like, because you're tied to them and they just keep yanking on the rope while you try to pee. Yeah. And meanwhile, she's standing right next to Ryan peeing <laughs> yeah, on the rock. And he's pissed off at me because I'm peeing on the platform. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, I, that, was Ryan pissed etiquette. off at you or was it me? No, you were. Well, no, no. Mine thing is... Uh, etiquette. Etiquette. Right? Because where, where the anchors are, right? Because a lot of these climbs, there's nothing in between, but there's two bolts that you can repel off of or anchor okay. to. Um, so the idea then is like, other people have to share this space and nobody wants to stand around smelling your pee. It was like 40 degrees. It's going to dry. Anyway, long story short, that was my story. No, no. Short story long. Yeah. 
All right, all right, all right. So, um, what's coming up next? Because I think, you, of course, you did some other trips in between after mm-hmm. CDT, did a few things in the U.S. You tried the van life. Yeah. 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 What was that like? Well, I don't like it. I don't, it's, I don't like being in a vehicle for that long. Mm. I'd rather be sleeping outside and walking outside than being in the car, but it was okay. So, um, I just, I guess I just blame what happened. So, um, I was on the CDT. I got to, um, Colorado border way too much snow, even in New Mexico, Northern New Mexico, I was in snow up to my waist and I'm like, I don't want to go any further. Uh, people who were going ahead, they're walking like the highway and these low alternative routes. And I'm like, that's where snowshoes would come in. No, no, no. Colorado has this soft (laughs) mashed potato snow. People in snowshoes were sinking into their waist. Mm. Like it was, it was not helpful. It was just not. And then there were people who did go continue on the official route, but it was very dangerous with like, it was mountaineering. Like it was not hiking at all. You can't, Gotcha. You can't say that at all. And uh, so then I went into southern Wyoming, and then I hiked the basin, which is pretty much desert. Mm-hmm. And then I hit snow again, too much snow. So I went home, and then I started from the Canada border um, at Glacier National Park in Montana, and then I walked south to where I left off in Wyoming. So I finished almost all of Wyoming <laughs> except for the Wind River Range because – um, Sorry, why I mean on the CDT? Or I'm confused. Or yeah. On the CDT. Yeah, yeah gotcha. this is all CDT. And yeah. then um, they were having a week of bad weather. Uh, there was a 30-hour snowstorm at one point, And I'm like, I'm not going up there alone because I was by myself at the yeah. time. And I was like, yeah. I really don't. I don't I'm, I'm not going to enjoy this. And I wanted to do some alternatives uh, up in the winds. And there's no way with the weather I would have been able mm-hmm. to. It would have been mm-hmm. way too dangerous. So I'm like, okay, I'll save that for later. Gotcha. So my friend was working in Jackson Hole in Jackson, Wyoming. So then I met up with her. And that's when we got into her van. And then we continued in her van towards the West Coast and visited some cities in the west coast nice so i was with her for about two weeks before coming back and we we did stop and do some hiking and some parks and stuff but it's not the same Same. it's it's moving too fast in the van (laughs) see it's the thing that we keep thinking about with the van is more just the you know when we go on like our climbing trips Mm -hmm. there's something about hey climb all day and then you actually have like a nice bed to sleep in Mm -hmm. right and then, you know, because I, I agree with you, if I'm, if I'm trekking, I want to sleep in the woods. Mm-hmm. But then there's the thing of like, well, listen, we climbed all day. It's nice to have a fridge in I'm the I'm just van. happy to be in the forest like for me. You know, yeah. I mean, I haven't done a through hike, so I can't relate in that regard, in all honesty. Not really. Not ever. No, yeah, you haven't. I haven't. Not at all. Like, not, 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 even, not even a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah yeah and, and i find the van makes you lazy because if you're sure on foot then like you have no choice you gotta keep it's like walking. being at home you're lazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like oh do i want to get up and hike or oh it looks drizzly out i'll just stay in the van and watch the van. netflix exactly listen don't get me wrong because when ryan, <laughs> ryan and i were down in the adirondacks last fall um it was like the sort of the last climbing trip of the year and, you know, when we were climbing, the like, literally it was so cold that, like, dribbles of ro- water running down the rock were frozen into ice. You know, so it's not good climbing season. Oh, you know, it's yeah. too cold. So at the campsite we stay at, it's, it's called the Climber's Camp. It's sort of this free car camping. Um, and, but the only people that camp there are climbers. And... These climbers from Quebec who had this like motor home from like it's like a van camper truck. Yeah. You know, like kind of the thing where like somebody waved a fucking Merlin wand at and went, oh, we're going to make it bigger and beautifuler. And, <laughs> you know, they were climbing guides. So they had stickers all o- or like, you know, graphics all over it and all this kind of shit. And Ryan and I, when they pulled in, we were sitting around the campfire. They, they'd have got there after dark because they were climbing down in the gunks a few hours south of us and were making their way back to Quebec. And they knew, you know, obviously if you climb in this area, you know the campsite. So they pulled in and went, oh, this is good. We pull in and then we do the camping. Um, and literally, Ryan and I are sitting around the campfire. And you think if other people are sitting <laughs> around a campfire, you just come and pull out your chairs and hang around the campfire. 
they literally parked, took a couple of dogs out for a pee, went back inside, and then you heard, like, you know, throw mama from the train or whatever the fucking movie they were playing on their on their TV no set. No way. You know, because you could hear it. They had the oh. windows cracked open. It's like, you know, in the French, you know, don't start saying, right? But but it's just like going and then the, like the and all the sounds. And Ryan and I are both sitting there, of course, drinking some Paps Blue Ribbon because you can get that cheap at Walmart. Um, just, it, you know, it's just one of those things of like, Okay, that's what the van life is about. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are living the van life. And what that what the van life really is, is I've got a shitty apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but but they're doing the same thing we do. Like last yeah. night, what do we do? Yeah, we just watch TV. Yeah, yeah. We, we watched some Netflix. We were watching Tropic Thunder. Mm. What did you learn? <laughs> Tropic Thunder? <laughs> yeah. What did you learn? Oh, my God. What not to do. What's no, the, I what's the, what's I the too, one I was falling third. asleep. <laughs> yeah, you were falling asleep, but in Tropic Thunder, oh like, you know, God. Robert Downey Jr. and Blackface. Oh, my God. Which is that was strangely hilarious. topical with our prime minister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ben Stiller, who Catherine found particularly jacked in that yeah, movie. Yeah, he was jacked. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, the fellow with the energy drink called Booty Sweat. Yes. Um, <laughs> and his busted nut energy bars, which I, I thought was, you know, terribly <laughs> offensive. Uh, not really. <laughs> But what is the one thing Have you, you see that movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 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 a great what is movie. the one thing we all learned? Do you remember, Sarah? Yeah, you never go full retard. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom, motherfuckers! You never go full retard. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to win the Academy Award, you only go, you know, like a third to half. <laughs> Oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. good. She never got to see the end of the movie, but but it was just one of those things. Robert Daddy Jr. in blackface, like fucking Iron Man. That was so amazing. I was looking at his makeup. He's like, like, holy shit. I gotta tell you. <laughs> you're missing the point. You never go full retard. <laughs> and she's just like, this is the funniest fucking movie. And she, like the fact that she'd never seen it before. No. Like this, uh, this is what I try to bring. You know, it's like, to our relationship. I, 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 yeah, I brought you rock climbing, and I brought Tommy. you tropical thunder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so oh, it's, it's it's a little bit. All right, all right. <laughs> you try so, to give me things like emotions and sensitivity. <laughs> you know, you failed so far, but at least you're trying. <laughs> hey, I brought writing back to your life. All right, all right. So, what about jungle? Jungle tracks? Has that ever crossed your mind? Have you done that? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I did three days in Costa Rica in the jungle, gotcha. just a little backpacking. Yeah. Well, with, with Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> you know the problem um, with jungles? What? You get crotch rot. <laughs> There's too many things that can kill you also. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I did that, I did that trek in Mexico years ago. Yeah. It went, it, you're like hot and sweaty and you think you might have a yeast infection in your balls, which I don't even think is possible, but it's like, you just like... <laughs> You just go, why? Like, this isn't, <laughs> like, it's not like it's this uh, grand adventure. It's like everything's covered in gunk. Yeah. It's like, not it's, like you can go swimming in any river safely. Like, it's <laughs> wet and slimy and ugh. Yeah. And I'm just talking about myself. I'm yeah. wet and slimy and ugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, the rest of the world is that way. Yeah. Right? Like, and I think, and I don't know if that's why, I, excuse me, I love the desert. Mm-hmm. But you can, like, it's not all green and covered in shit, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, there's scorpions and some rattlesnakes and all that kind of thing, but like... You almost came across a rattlesnake, eh? That happens quite often, though. Oh, yeah, I see rattlesnakes yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know what you can do with those motherfuckers? Mm. As long as you don't step on them. Mm. You have a stick in your hand. Yeah, I know. Right? And I'm not saying kill them. <coughs> but, but the fact <laughs> is, if it's you versus rattlesnake and you got a trekking pole in your hand... Mm-hmm. Uh, you got at least a 50 50 chance <laughs> <laughs> you know and you hike with trekking poles yeah yeah you hike with trekking yes, poles of course me too yes right and think about a rattlesnake like a big fat rattlesnake we're still way bigger than they are right you know so like yeah, one, i wouldn't want to get bitten by one though of course you wouldn't <laughs> and you don't want to get stung by a scorpion you don't want to get stung by a bee <laughs> 
you know, but the big key is, uh, you know, be aware. Like when we ran into that rattlesnake down in uh, the Black Forest Trail. Yes. Oh, that was very easy to, you know, scope it out. Walk around. Yeah, it was like 15 feet away. Yeah. Yeah, For sure. It made a noise, went, hey, peoples. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, rattle, rattle, rattle. Yeah, yeah. And then we went, oh, look, let's not go there. Yeah. And we were fine. Mm -hmm. One animal that I did not mess around with on the CDT was the grizzly bear, though. You saw? Did you see any? Yes, six grizzly bears. Oh, wow. And I hiked by myself, and there's two times it, I was, like, really, really afraid. Were you? Talk yeah. about that. So the first time, um, like, if they're, they're, like, from a distance and they go off somewhere, <clears throat> I'm just like, okay, fine. You're fine. But uh, I was walking along the trail, and I heard a twig snap, and I looked, and there is, like, a little cute cub oh fuck. at first i thought why is there a teddy bear oh no that's not a teddy bear <clears throat> and then i looked and i didn't know where the mom was and then i thought i stopped for a minute and i'm like should i keep going but what if she's behind me and i just stopped yeah. right beside her cub oh fuck. and so then i just thought okay i'll just keep going yeah and, it's the last thing i, and I do. never i never saw her so i don't know where she was yeah well, she's a ne- negligent mom just letting her kids <laughs> walk all around <laughs> And then um, when I was coming out of Yellowstone, um, I came over like a teeny tiny little rise mm-hmm. and I was just looking at my feet and I looked up and there was a mom and an older cub right on the trail, uh, distance between me and your door. Holy shit. Yeah. And then and you didn't even have the shovel that Katie had. Yeah. <laughs> so so I just, I just kind of froze there and... The mama kind of froze, and we looked each other in the eye, and I was just kind of like, "Mama, what you gonna do?" And she was looking at me like, "What I was gonna do." And so we were there for uh, for a moment, and then she decided to. Uh, she kind of made a noise like, hum, hum, and went up side sideways up the trail. Yeah, and, and then I was super freaked out still, totally, because I'm like, "What if she took her cub away and she's gonna come back for me?" Yeah, because I didn't know what was gonna happen. So yeah. I walked pi- by there, and then. Like 45 seconds later, this big horse train came up. Like all these uh, people like, um, because in Yellowstone, people like to ride a lot of horses. Gotcha. And so I'm like, okay, there's horses here. I'm safe. Bear's not coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Holy shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, out west. Not the southwest, but west-west. Yeah. Um, They have these walking tanks called grizzly bears. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, most of the time you're fine. Yeah, like it most. really comes into the, it's almost like swimming out in the ocean. Most of the time you're fine, but if a great white <laughs> shark decides it's going to get you, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. A grizzly bears the same way. Doesn't very often. Yeah, decide some are it, predatory. Yeah, it's you know, it's, but it happens, it's very yeah. rare. Yeah, I've heard about it in the Yukon. Yeah, but it's rare. Yeah, but if it does happen, it's like, oh, my time's done. Okay, cool. Yeah, you we got to get Katie on to talk about her situation. Yeah. Anyway, his friend of ours, I got. Almost she, killed and mauled by a bear. Grizzly. Well, I don't know if she got killed and mauled. She didn't. No. But it was on hind legs and she could smell it. And then it, it was close it? enough that she could smell it and watch the sun glint off its um, eyes. Fur and, and, and then it she was, realized it was, she was at peace, yeah, with what was yeah, about going to so happen. Yeah, I'm going to die now. <laughs> and then everybody else, <laughs> basically just before, it, you know, they, it happened. when, when she reached that, that zen point. Of accepting her fate. <laughs> a bunch of other people came up and started throwing rocks at the bear. <laughs> yeah. You know. But we don't want to give the girl's store away. No, story we don't. Away. We just said we'll have to erase that. No, we won't. It's anyway. a tea. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's all right. a teaser. It is, it is. So tell yes. us about what's coming up next. Uh, well, in, I guess on Sunday, I'm flying to Barcelona. Nice. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to take the train to Madrid. And then I'm going to walk to uh, Santiago de Compostela via the Camino Madrid, the Camino San Salvador, and the Camino Primitivo. Camino Madrid um, is a uh, less traveled route, not a lot of people do, and then the other two are in the mountains, and they're they're like the most difficult, and I'm using air quotes here, Mm. difficult of the Caminos. I don't think they're going to be that difficult for me, but we'll see what happens when I get there. And meanwhile, you know, I can picture, uh, you know, an Instagram of Sarah, Mm -hmm. like, hanging off, like, some rebar stuck in the rock. These fucking Spanish! (laughs) (laughs) They said this was the easy one. Oh, my God. Have you done anything in Switzerland? 
No, I've never been to Switzerland. Oh my god, their tolerance for all that stuff is completely off the charts. Like it's what we think is like climbing. They're no, like nothing. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you've got that planned, and then where, where are you off to next? Yeah, well, I was gonna do the West Highland Way, but m- mm. my husband in his job he couldn't take the time off, and okay. so I didn't want to do it without him. So that's postponed. Yeah, and then did you um, just say that with a little bit of a Scottish accent? She did. It sounded like by accident. Postponed. (laughs) I'm not going to do it. There, lass. And then, um, because because of the Continental Divide timeline is a little off, I was going to go to Australia, but mm. Australia, I don't know how to say Australia, is postponed in the yeah, Australian yeah. accent. Yeah. But I, uh, but I am going to go Send about a boat. Just go no, for a that's, walkabout. That's, uh, a walkabout. Uh, wait, shrimp on the barbie. Yes. Wait, I, I, my accents are all fucked. Yeah, they are. Just you know, stop. I sound like a Romanian. Just stop. <laughs> And then I, I'm going to walk the Lishan Way in Turkey, so I have mm. to figure out that timeline. And then I have some more time before the end of the year, so I don't know what the third trail is going to be yet for the okay. end of the year. And okay. then I don't know what I'm doing next year either. Wow. I have, like, a whole bunch of ideas, but I haven't booked anything, so... Have I you have done anything no down clue. in the Andes yet? Um, I've done, um, yeah, I've, I've gone hiking in Colombia a few times, and I've done a little bit of hiking in Peru. But gotcha. oh oh in the summer I got I'm going back to the United States definitely because yeah. I need to finish the small section on the PCT that I missed because of fire and I need to finish uh, Colorado and the Wind River Range on the CDT and I need to finish the northern part of the AT so that's going to be yeah, like you haven't done New Hampshire and Maine yeah have you? I've, I stopped at um, Pauling New York so that's near the Connecticut border mm. yeah, so you you <laughs> haven't done the best parts yet yeah so my plan is to finish those two and then that way when i finish on katahdin then i have my triple crown and i think that's like the best the best end point and you know what you have to do is get a picture of yourself (laughs) finishing on katahdin with a burger king crown no it's going to be something more special than burger king crown (laughs) but you know it's funny because most people finish their triple crowns you know like on the cdt so it's going to be something like super special to finish on the AT. i think i think i want a tiara because uh, I would call it my triple tiara crown that I'm hiking sections on all three of the major trails. Cool. Yeah, Catherine almost touched the AT this year. I know. I told but her. But then yeah. she got the food I got poisoning. Food poisoning. I didn't puke up my meetings. That was good. That was for work. Yeah. And then I was sick. And she's going to do a little bit of the Wildcats in New Hampshire. I know. And I forgot like my I, GPS. I planned it. Yeah, I planned out my knee braces. Yeah, like she fucked up completely. <laughs> and, and I was carrying all this luggage. Yeah, I was kind you know, of disappointed. But like, I planned this like awesome little loop in the Wildcats. You'd get to do Mariah. I know. You know. Um, yeah, I was sad. Yeah, and then it's like puked her guts out, forgot her knee braces, forgot you know, her GPS. Um, but still. So listen, if people want to, if I want to live vicariously through you, <laughs> or how can in general people support you along the way? What, what is it that you need? What, what do you ask people to do or check and follow you? What's the um, social medias and etc. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, even though I could do better with posting more photos. And then my Instagram is the at symbol sci-fi underscore Sarah. Or if you type in my name, Sarah Duma, you'll find me. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. And then uh, same thing on YouTube, my channels, Sarah Duma. Cool. And then, They're awesome. And do you have I like loved- anything? Do you have anything like the Patreons or anything? I do. She does. I do have a Patreon. I support I it. <laughs> I don't because I do. I want her to drink beer. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? What? Well, uh, listen, I'm, I'm the, just give her five just, bucks right now. Just yeah. as just as I set you, you up take for some the, beer with you, you know, <laughs> like I acknowledge you for that beautiful segue. <laughs> right now, I'm just acknowledging that you fucked up my beautiful segue. Oh, <laughs> but I, I always appreciate five dollars towards me drinking beers along that's the way. Right. I drink a lot of beer in trail towns. Because yeah. that's, that's part of the experience for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Like, I, I don't want to necessarily rush on the trail, and I also don't want to rush in the trail towns. Some hikers just want to get in and out like ninjas. I actually want to, like, experience and know what the local vibe is like. You can write a whole article or magazine or whatever on beer. Yeah. <laughs> the beer beer across America. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I the bet, world. Yeah. Now, what is Israeli beer like? 
Not very good. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, because they, they make good wine, though. Yeah, like that's over <laughs> one of those things. It's like there's certain countries or certain cultures that you think of, you know, when you think of Trappist monks. I don't know where Trappist monks are from, but, you know, you just hear about the Trappist monks and their beer. You know, Stella Artois, monks and their beer. Belgium. Mm-hmm. Belgian beer. Yep. France has got some half decent beer. Obviously, England mm-hmm. and Ireland, you know, there's some good beers and lagers. Uh, Japan. Weird as it is, Sapporo. some good beer. Yeah, it's my favorite. Um, and then the United States, Canada. Like, mm-hmm. really? Like, what country is more associated beer with beer than Canada? <laughs> <laughs> right? Then beer, Israel. Mm. <laughs> nope. Uh, you know. And it's very, very expensive there also. Is it? Super expensive for alcohol in Israel. Like, incredibly ins- expensive. Yeah, wow. but that's okay because the cocaine's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of one of them jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I flat. I know, I did. Because <laughs> that was a fake laugh. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but that's because everybody... That means don't continue. <laughs> no, but because everybody knows it's math in Israel. Hmm. Right, because when I'm making coke jokes, <laughs> right, people are like, "Oh, fucking guy, it's math." Like, you know, that's our thing. Crickets. <laughs> 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 All right, Sarah. Cool having you on. Yeah, can't wait to have you back in the next six or eight months. Of like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> see what's been happening. But that Israel National Trail sounds just amazing. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Yeah. So. <sighs> Until next time, what do we say, Catherine? Do you remember? Fuck. <laughs> I just I thought I, wait, 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 I wait. thought I would set her up for our tag. Play dirty. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe I forgot that. You'll be able to get a t-shirt soon. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Please go on iTunes if you like the show. You know, it's something that we try. We we're really working hard on. Are you begging? Yes, I'm begging. <laughs> <laughs> go on iTunes or wherever that you can rate podcasts and give us a five star review. Put a comment in. Like, if you don't want to give us a five star review, keep it to yourself, okay? <laughs> um, you know, we don't need the low ratings. We want to bump up in the ratings so there more people get to hear what we're doing. Okay. Because the only reason we're doing this is so that hopefully we have an effect on people. We get people outside, we get people adventuring, right? And we need the word to spread. So share it with your friends. And done. Bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye.